Hey y'all, John here. Welcome back to another video. And in this video, we're going to basically talk about the M1 Pro 16 inch MacBook Pro and the M3 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro. So I've been using the M3 Pro 14 inch MacBook Pro for the last six months, basically since release. And I've had this M1 Pro MacBook since about last year. Um, after shortly after, I bought this shortly after I bought my M2 iPad Pro. So I'm just going to be comparing the two. Um, I'll let you know what I think about this. I've just been using this machine for the past six months and um, we'll go from there. All right, so let's get started. So this machine is my main workhorse, the 16 inch. I love the screen on this. It's amazing. It just works. The 14 inch is something I've been testing for the past six months. And I'm just going to show you more of my experiences. Um, I actually ran a Geekbench test on these back in March. So this MacBook and this MacBook M1 Pro, M3 Pro, um, CPU is not that is a bit of an improvement on this chip, um, just because we're running on three nanometer and it's a bit more powerful. So I'm going to put those on screen for you for you to see. But GPU performance is basically the same between these two. Um, I actually ran a um, DaVinci Resolve export test, and this ran I think about five seconds three to five seconds faster than the M3 Pro. I actually threw my M2 iPad Pro in there as well, just to experiment since it's basically full resolve on there. Um, I do not test with Final Cut, but I love Final Cut, but the main thing with Final Cut for me um, is I feel like I want more options than <laughs> Resolve gives me that without paying for Premiere. Um, Final Cut on this on these two Macs is a lot better. It's a lot more optimized for the screen, I feel like, compared to Resolve that feels way too cramped, even with the more space setting on the 14 inch, but it works just fine on the 16. Um, as far as video editing speeds, I feel like both these Macs have issues scrubbing really fast, but in Premiere, not Premiere, Final Cut, I'm able to scrub through a 4K timeline just fine. So with me, I shoot everything in 4K, my timeline's in 4K, so I get it, it's going to be a bit of a strain, but since these have eight, 16 at 18 gigs of RAM, I've noticed that I usually hover at the 12 gig mark. Um, so that's basically all the RAM being used up by one project in, uh, in um, let's say, Resolve Studio. So um, main thing I would say is that if you're buying one of these Macs, make sure you get like a 32 gig, let's say an M1 Mac, so that'll be the easiest SKU to get, or a um, uh, M3. I think they make an M3 Pro with 36 gigs of RAM, but you're probably gonna have to go up to the max and then you're gonna be spending a lot more. But you also have to factor in this Mac was about 1350 refurbished from my local micro center. And this Mac is about, was it 2600 or so um, new? So for the amount of money I'm paying for the new machine and losing screen real estate, I feel like I'm not gaining anything, if you know what I mean, other than maybe some slight battery life. So. Um, this is also somewhat of a lopsided comparison where this MacBook basically is docked most of its life, but it does go out a lot. So I will go out to a coffee shop and start editing a 4K timeline and do all my video conferencing stuff like that for meetings. This Mac who does run as Microsoft Edge and I do video editing, but it's mainly on basically power. It's basically always docked and plugged in. Um, this um, running Microsoft Edge <laughs> for productivity tests. Um, can last, if I start my day at 8 a.m. and end it at, four, let's say, 4 or 4.30, I'll still be at, I'll still be sitting at like 60% and that's with an external monitor connected. It just it goes and goes and goes. But then again, that's not a, anything that's too power intensive versus with this, I can kill this in like four or five hours of heavy use with leaving Resolve Studio open. But again, much different usage between the two. Um, they're both great machines. Um, just for different things like on this mac since again we're looking at 16 gigs of ram i've been able to basically have app shut down so i have a 70,000 um image raw catalog with my images from let's say 2017 to 2022 with all my wedding photos all that stuff and this mac just cannot handle it to the point where i have to move it into a vm on my precision 7820 or i have to run it on my other pc that i have and then it'll run just fine this Mac, 100% worth it, but needs more RAM. If I wasn't editing video on it, I'd be perfectly fine. It also has a terabyte of storage over the 512 on this. So it's a beaut. Um, but yeah, that's the that's, I think that's the main issue I have with this. I wish I had more RAM. 
but as far as performance goes these are basically the same i honestly don't care about benchmarks i think i've mentioned that before i have them but it's like they don't mean anything to me now um i actually ran a quick rendering test and resolve on these two macs and my m2 ipad i think i mentioned this in the beginning this m1 pro macbook finished about three to five seconds faster than this one that's yeah, kind of depressing and then I threw my my M2 iPad Pro in there as well, and the M2 iPad Pro was left behind. It was dusted, so don't worry about that. But considering this is the new machine that costs almost double the basically double the money as this, I would expect this to be much faster. But again, GPU performance is basically the same, so that basically confirmed it. Um, and I ran these two on battery, and the, only the iPad was plugged in. But yeah, as I've, I've talked about before, I'm just going to conclude this review by saying, if I was back in the market, I would never buy this. I would only buy this, but with the M1 Max. Now, I was afraid of M1 Max because, again, it was $500 more expensive, and I already had a PC, um, and I'm like, why do I want the decreased battery life of M1 Max? Just to have additional graphics performance, but I kept forgetting it comes with more RAM. So, um, more RAM would be a lot more useful on the go, um, I would say. So, if you're buying one of these two systems, I would heavily recommend you buy either this with the 16 gig, one terabyte spec for, let's say, 1350, 1400, wherever you're at. And that was Apple certified refurbished. Um, or if you can find an M1 Max with 30 gigs of RAM for under two grand, I'd say that would be a beautiful deal as well. Um, great machines, but I honestly, I do not use the new features on this, like the new HDMI port, the new Wi-Fi standard. I just don't use them. I run 10 gig Ethernet on Thunderbolt. So other than that, these machines are basically the same other than the screen size and this really nice new color that we have here. This space black is very nice. I mean, fingerprinty compared to the classic, um, space gray, which I actually do admire a bit more, but yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, hopefully you gained something from it. I just basically talked about my feelings and my experience with these two. I don't want to just throw graphs at you because I'm sure you've already watched all those together, um, all, all together, whatever. Um, but yeah, stay tuned for my next video and we'll go from there.